Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And in today's video, we wanna talk about what in the world is a media server? Is it the same as a pixel mapper? What's a pixel mapper? And do I need one? So this month on the channel, we're talking all about getting video as part of our stage show with lighting. And as we talked about in the last video, that could be LED wall panels, it could be projection, it could be actual TVs or displays as we call them, or it could be playing video content across typical stage lights. Okay, all of these are included. And so now we wanna dive in a little bit deeper and talk about some of the tools that get this done and talk about, okay, how do we use these tools to enhance our show? And how does it work from a programming and playback perspective? So the first thing I want to do is, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, the uh, triggering in the next video, but I just wanna talk about this concept of what a media server is, do you need one? Versus what a pixel mapper is. So being that we're a lighting channel and I talk about lighting, I wanna talk first about pixel mappers. Okay, so a pixel mapper, as we talked about in the last video, and I'm gonna open up Ntex Elm here as a example, a pixel mapper works like this. You arrange your lights, in this case I'm using Ntex Elm, so I've just got strips of LED here. You arrange them in the 2D that they are, the 2D method that they are, so um, you know, however they're set up in the world in 2D or 3D, you set it up that way in the pixel mapper, and then uh, there's even 3D as well in a lot of these, as I mentioned. And then you just go ahead, once you've got it on a canvas on a 2D perspective or 3D, you then go ahead and you play content on it, okay? And that content can be any sorts of things. Now this is a show that I opened that I realized has a lot more in it than I meant, um, but you can choose any variety of content. It can be words, it can be images, it can be generated things. And then these content are going to then be mapped. That's, that's the term pixel map, is we're taking this video content as we see right here, and we place it onto lights generally. Okay, when, we, when we're talking about pixel mapping, we're generally talking about lights. And so this is gonna be for stage lighting fixtures, LED pixel strips, individual Christmas light LED pixels, uh, like I talk about from time to time. You know, anything that works via Artnet or SACN, um, via these DMX type protocols, is going to fall under the, the umbrella of pixel mapping. And we've got some great tools with that. Like I mentioned here, Ntex Elm is a killer piece of software. If you're using like RGB and RGBW LEDs, you're using LED tapes or other LED pixel products. Um, Elm is a great choice. And if you are using like physical pixels and not like a pre-built product that has a driver with it, if you do buy Ntex pixel drivers, they give you Elm for free, licensed to the amount of universes that your driver can do uh, with each driver that you buy, and then you can just stack those licenses, which I think is pretty stinking cool. Um, also, we've got Onyx. So I talk about Onyx a lot here on the channel. It's one of my favorites, and it allows you to go ahead and similarly use your 2D plan, which you're already generating in Onyx. Uh, if you're doing shows, you typically generate this, and then you can go and oops, I just reinstalled Onyx. I don't have the media and you can put media on that. So I only have this one piece of media. Um, you can put a generated media on there. Um, there are a lot of options as to the things you can create and you can go ahead then. And just as an example, put a colorful image or video across those lights. And when you actually put it on a rig of lights, you see, it looks really stinking cool. And so that's pixel mapping. Uh, that's the basic gist of it. I have other videos both here and inside of Lauren Stage Lighting Labs that goes into detail about these two pieces of software and how to best use them. Um, but that's the general gist is you say, okay, I've got all these lights. They may be pixel type fixtures or just fixtures. You know, if it's a, just a regular like RGB LED fixture, then it's one pixel, right? And if it's got multiple pixels, then it can be multiple. 
um, and you simply place those in your, your 2D perspective here on Onyx, or if they're regular pixels, uh, you could use Elm as another option, uh, depending on your control needs. And then you can just run that video content right on top of it. And it works really great, okay? Now what's a media server? So media servers, I think, came to our world first before pixel mappers, okay? And both of these, on Onyx and Elm, play the part of both. And in fact, most media servers also play the part of pixel mapper at least a little bit. So a media server, to define it, is a playback device for video signals. That's how I like to describe it, okay? So what you might find is software or hardware-based approaches. First, they were, they were boxes you bought that were very big and expensive. And the box... Uh, allows you to arrange your different screens or outputs, set their sizes, and then output through multiple video outputs on the back of it to uh, different devices, to projectors, to TVs, LED walls, whatever. Okay, that's a media server. Now, today, a lot of people, especially if you're starting out, you're going to use a computer. Okay, so there's software like Mad Mapper. Uh, which is made for projection mapping, but it also does the media server thing too. Then we've got Resolum, which is uh, used a lot in like the DJ EDM world, okay, to be able to manage multiple displays. We've got our Chaos, uh, which is an entry level software as well uh, that a lot of people use. And so any of these allow you to play video files and generated content, things like that and play them out to multiple video displays. Generally, um, choosing between a media server and a pixel mapper, you've got to decide which is more important to you. Like a lot of these, I'm not as experienced in uh, media servers as I am lighting consoles that have pixel mappers and, and programs like Elm that are standalone. But I can tell you that from my experience, you know, software like Resolume, uh, Madrix is another one, they often mad mapper, they often offer the ability to do LED pixels within their software, but it's kind of in a side. It's not like their main function, and then but their main function is doing multiple video outputs. Whereas a pixel mapper generally does a single uh, video output if it can, and is designed to do pixel mapping. So like in Elm, we can pop up a window. I know I just closed it. That gives you the output. Same with Onyx. Now there, there's a window in here now. Um, I can go grab it quick because I haven't before. Um, but we literally go in here and it is a window and it is called Dialos Zone Output. And if I use that window, I can full screen this one. And I just got to find the zone I was on. There it is. And I'm able to set this as the output. And if I play around with, the, with all these settings... Um, I can go ahead and get rid of a lot of the, the sidebars and stuff. And I could actually technically put this on a second monitor on its own display and project it, put it on a video wall, whatever. Is it the highest resolution? No, but it's something. Okay. So when you're choosing, you basically are looking at, okay, media server versus pixel mapper. Am I looking more to do lights and put lights on a canvas and run that content across them? Maybe including video, actual like video displays, you know, video outputs. Or am I looking to do multiple video outputs? I want to arrange them in the space as to where they'd be. And maybe I'd get into pixels a little bit, maybe not, okay? Uh, as you can see, these can work together or separately. In fact, a program like Elm actually can really bridge that gap. So say, just as an example, you might be thinking, okay, David, I want to do both. Like I want to do, have my content playing on multiple displays, and then I want to take that content and have a really good, easy to use pixel mapper. Then something like NTX Elm might be a really great solution for you because it can take in streaming video and then map it to those lights uh, as needed. So this is just an overview. It's not um, an in-depth tutorial on all of these, but I wanna give you an idea and really give you the tools to begin to understand, okay, this is what I would need if I want to do this, right? I maybe wanna do more of the pixel mapping, the making lights play video side, 
Or maybe I'm really looking for a media server type program and I want to go ahead and make video displays, play video, maybe integrating the lights, maybe not. Okay, so that's really the difference. And you'll know if you need one or if you need software that does it uh, based on, you know, obviously it's easy, media server is pretty simple. You go, okay, I have all these video displays. I want to play one image and make them all play the right parts of the image based on where they are in the space, right? Because you could go and you could play an image, you could play a video, and you could just send that video content, maybe it's widescreen, to all your different displays and projectors, and they would all display the same thing. But if you want to literally stretch that across all your displays so that where the display sits in the space, it plays that portion of the video, then you're going to need a media server. Okay. Um, on the other hand, the pixel mapper is a little more, you know, go with the flow, right? Um, chance, these are all, if we're talking about pixel map lights, these are all lights that we could technically control with just a regular lighting console. And you can do that all day long putting chases and effects upon them, but employing a pixel mapper like you see here, you can start to see how, um, especially if I actually had the content loaded because I went to a new version yesterday and I totally forgot. Um, but you can see, even just with the content I have here, I can create so many different and unique looks literally on my stage um, by just selecting different media. And it's a whole lot quicker and a whole lot easier than making a whole bunch of chases and effects. And so hopefully that makes sense. I hope this helps you. If you've thought about media servers in the past, if you've thought about how to get video into your lighting, then these are all going to be great for you. Um, I'm excited for the rest of this series, guys. If you haven't grabbed my free guide to begin with lighting, be sure to do that over at learnstagelighting.com. And in our next video, we're going to go into how to trigger video clips along with your lighting. Like, how do we keep this stuff in sync together during a show? I'll see you there. Thanks.